You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. low near 15. Scattered snow squall activity tomorrow with a high of 34. With the wind out of the north at 19 miles. We're almost there. Where exactly is there? Jerry, it's freezing out there. I mean, you gonna tell me what this is all about or is this some kind of surprise party? It should be no surprise to you, Brett. But what I'm about to show you, you can't tell anyone about. And I mean anyone. Look, Jerry, you're my brother, and you know you can trust me, but what are you into? You're not building some kind of meth lab out in the middle of this woods, are you? You know me better than that. I've never touched drugs in my life. Just give me a minute when we get there, and I'll explain it all. You got permission to be on this property. It's kind of remote. I don't need permission. I own it. You own it? When did you buy this? And why? It's just wasteland. There's a group of us. Friends. Some guys I met. We all pitched in. We've been working out here on the project for about a year now. The project? A compound. It's underground. It's a place to be safe. And we're almost done. That's why I wanted to show you. I talked to the group, and we agreed that we could bring some family and friends into the fold. What, did you join some kind of cult or something? I got news for you, man. I ain't joining no cult. In fact, all I'm thinking now is how do I talk you out of it? It's not a cult. Although we do have some common beliefs. Here we are. Try to be nice. We've all been a bit suspicious any time someone new shows up. That's not a happy-looking bunch, man. They look cold and miserable. How nice am I supposed to be? Just let me do the introductions. Hello, Jerry. Didn't know you were bringing company. Hello, Tom. Phil? Alex? Hello, Bob. Jerry? Guys, this is my brother, Brett. He can be trusted. And like we all agreed, we can bring some family members into the arrangement. You know, Jerry, this is a lot earlier than I thought. I mean, we all figured we'd wait until the last day, and then... Well, that's when we'd introduce our selections. Well, Brett has an opportunity to relocate to London, and I thought, well, if he does, that he'll be far away, and then it would be too late. He's going to sign the oath. He can't leave until he does. Okay, okay, everyone slow down here. Jerry, what did you get me into? I don't like that tone, Jerry. You shouldn't have brought him here. Excuse me, uh, Tom, that's your name, right, Tom? Uh, Tom, you don't have to talk to Jerry like I'm not here. You can talk to me. I mean, I'm being friendly and all. I mean, hey, look, I'm smiling, okay? But could you just... Could someone just tell me what you're all doing and what this oath is all about? Something you want me to sign? Brett, we own 400 acres. We're building an underground compound. Reinforced concrete, ventilation, water and food supplies for years, living quarters for 50 families. And there's room for you and Claire. You need to be safe, and I want you both to join us. What are you talking about? So now it's done. Now he knows, and now he's in. You. You all think when you start showing up with friends and relatives, it's going to be any easier for them to understand any of this? What we're doing now, what I'm doing now, is going to happen again. So let's all get used to it. He can't leave here, Jerry. 
Not till he signs the oath, and we know he'll keep the secret. Oh, man. What secret? 2012. December 21st, 2012. Jerry, you are going too far. They are all scientists, physicists, astronomers, researchers. A cataclysmic event is going to take place on December 21st, 2012. All life as we know it will cease to exist on the planet unless you're properly sheltered from the event. Don't tell me you bought that Mayan calendar thing they keep showing on cable TV. This was a bad idea, Jerry. You should have followed the protocol. Protocol? Secrets? An oath? A compound? Hey guys, let me guess. You're all still mad because Y2K never happened. You gotta stop falling for this stuff. Brett, just be quiet. Read the oath. Sign it. Just... just for once, do what I say. If he reads the oath, he has to sign it, Jerry. You do understand that? He'll sign. Here. Brett, just sign it. Just sign it now. Just sign it? Look, I don't care what it says, but I'm gonna read it first. Then we'll talk about this signing thing. Let's see. Um, I, your name here. Ha, huh, nice touch. Okay, from the top. I, Brett Hansen, do solemnly swear that I will abide by this oath and never reveal to anyone under any duress the contents, location, or intent of this confederation. I agree that I will maintain humanity under 500 million people in perpetual balance with nature guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity, unite humanity with a living new language, rule passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason, protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts, let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court, Avoid petty laws and useless officials. Balance personal rights with social duties. Prize truth, beauty, love, seeking harmony with the infinite. Be not a cancer on the earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. Hmm, very nice. Not the best lyrics and probably hard to dance to. You know something, guys? I think you're all nuts. Jerry, what did you get into? I'm really sorry about this, Jerry. You really shouldn't have brought him here. Jerry, what the hell did you get into? Meet Brett Hansen, an unwilling witness to the fear that defines the human species. A skeptic with an attitude in a world on the brink of apocalypse. It's a prediction about to come true in a place where prophecy has a zip code. There's a compound up ahead, and it's members only in the Twilight Zone. And now, the Twilight Zone and our story, 2012. Starring Christian Stolte with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Brett, is that you? Yeah, yeah, it's me. You were gone so long. You, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. You look a little stressed. No, it's nothing. Of course, there was a moment there where a guy had a Browning automatic rifle pointed at my face, what? locked, loaded, finger on the trigger, but what? other than that, everything's just fine. What happened? Were you robbed? No, not robbed. Threatened, terrorized, screamed at, yes, oh. but not robbed. Are you okay? Should we, should we call the police? No, I don't think we want the police. Besides, oh. all they would do is arrest my brother Jerry, and then I'd have to bail him out and pay for his lawyer. Jerry did this? Not really. It was one of his friends, or some guy he knows. Is Jerry in some kind of trouble? Yeah, yeah, I think you could say that. He's hooked up with some group that thinks the world is going to end. Not again. They built some kind of underground complex in the middle of nowhere in Michigan. You went to Michigan with Jerry? Yeah, he said he had to show me something before we left for London, and he did. What did he show you? What happened, Brett? Jerry and his friends, he says they're scientists, they... 
They've constructed an enormous underground bunker in the woods. It's got cots, food, water, and enormous drums, crazy pipes all over for ventilation. It was like a labyrinth with tunnels and room after room where people are going to live, I guess. You see, going through that Y2K thing again, is, it, is that what this is about? Kind of. Only now, he says it's all going to happen this year on December 21st. Like that stuff they keep running on cable. All that stuff about ancient civilizations predicting the end of the world. All I can figure is that he's so unhappy, he wants something to change, and he keeps believing in this stuff. I still think we should get him some professional help. It sounds like he's got it. All these guys he's hooked up with, he says they're really scientists. Of course, they're angry, gun-toting scientists, but they actually seemed intelligent. Why did they point a gun at you? They wanted me to sign something, an oath of secrecy. What did it say? I... I can't tell you. You signed it? It was that or take a bullet. Look, I don't even remember what it said. It was idiotic, new age, right-wing, bizarre stuff. I figured I'd sign it and get out of there, and maybe we just head to London sooner than later. What about Jerry? I can't help him. All I can do is hurt him. He'll be fine with these fellow knuckleheads, and when it all blows over in a week, he'll just have to wait for the next prophesied catastrophe. Are you sure you're okay? Now I am. I tell you, though, let's pack it up and get to London. We'll come back in the spring, and I'll check up on Jerry, and hopefully the next predicted disaster isn't in our lifetime. Sounds like a plan. I'm going to the post office. I have to figure out how to get our mail forwarded to an international address. Are you sure you're okay? I'm fine. And yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Let me call around and see how soon we can get to London. You take it easy. I'll be right back. All right, honey. Claire, is that you? Oh. Can I help you guys? Are you Brett Hansen? Who are you? I'm Special Agent Samuels with the National Security Agency. Are you Brett Hansen? Yeah. What's this all about? Can we come in? Yeah, if I guess. Thank you for your cooperation, Mr. Hansen. What kind of cooperation are you looking for? I don't even know why you're here and... Uh, oh, okay, of course, just let yourselves in. Please, Mr. Hansen, have a seat. Oh, yes, why, thank you. Thank you for inviting me to sit down at my own kitchen table. We know that you were in the company of your brother today and had contact with his associates. Are you following him? It has come to our attention that you have signed a document. Uh, look... That was at gunpoint. If I didn't sign that thing, we might not be having this conversation. It seems you have failed to abide by the oath. What? You swore to reveal nothing of what you learned or know, Mr. Hansen, and you have violated the oath. Is that why you're here? Get out of Dodge. Who are you guys, really? You part of that bunch my brother is hooked up with? The bunch your brother is hooked up with is part of a vast network. Your brother was recruited because he is actually somewhat of an expert on post-apocalyptic survival. What we're trying to understand is why he recruited you, and why you chose to tell your girlfriend all about those things you were sworn to keep secret. Wait a minute. How do you know I told her anything? Were you listening at the door? Actually, we've had your apartment under surveillance for quite some time. You bugged my apartment? There's a law against that, isn't there? You're going to have to come with us, Mr. Hansen. I'm afraid you can't be trusted. Get out. Get out of my apartment. Get out now, you... Oh. Has he had any other contact with anyone else? No one. His brother dropped him in front of the apartment, and he walked directly here. Only the woman had contact. Pick up the woman as well. She's now a threat. We can't let the word get out until we're ready. Understood.
okay? Uh, whoa. Claire, where are we? I don't know. A van pulled up on the street and they pulled me in. Who are these people? Are these the people your brother's mixed up with? I don't know who's with who and what's with what anymore. We've got to get out of here. Yeah, well, don't say it too loud. They had our apartment bugged, and it's a good bet they can hear everything we're saying right now. Hey! Hey, tough guys! Can you hear me? We know you're listening, so why don't you just tell us what you want? I don't think yelling at them is going to help. Yeah, well, so much for my brother. They actually think he's some kind of expert or something. Expert on what? Disasters. He's been planning for one as long as I've known him. So is something actually going to happen? Yes, something actually is going to happen. Well, if it isn't my favorite guys. I'm sorry we had to take such direct measures but we couldn't risk having both of you running around alarming the public. Don't we get to call a lawyer or something? No. But now that you are in sanitized custody, I can explain why you are such a risk. You don't believe what your brother fears, do you, Mr. Hansen? My brother's afraid of everything. What he should be afraid of is you. So you don't believe the Earth is in any danger? Oh, right. Post-apocalyptic collapse, I think that's the words you used. Gosh, let me think. No. To tell you the truth, we were skeptical as well at least until we started to look at the scientific evidence. You see, every 11 years, the sun goes through a solar cycle of increased solar activity. The last cycle was in 2001. And now, 11 years later, in 2012, we are in the midst of another solar cycle. Sunspots? That's what this is all about? You're afraid of sunspots? What's been identified? is a massive eruption affecting the entire surface of the sun. The resulting burst of radiation will effectively destroy every living thing on the surface of the planet. More than 10,000 scientists across numerous disciplines across the world have confirmed it. It's real, Mr. Hansen, and this time it's really coming. Fine, okay, fine. Let's play the game. I've played it with my brother many times and have recited those dates and names to him over and over again, and he's never listened, so why should you? So what happens now? Do Claire and I sit in this room and fry, or are you going to let us out of here? We haven't determined what our next steps will be, Mr. Hansen. However, if you... What's going on? Is it happening? Stay here. I'll check it out. You can't keep us locked up here! Trust me, you'll be safe here. Brett, what did you do? I gave him a taste of what he gave me. Now he's unconscious, let's get out of here. Where are we going? Anywhere but here. Who are all these people? I don't know, but they look a lot like us, scared and not sure where to go. Brett! Brett! Jerry! This way! Quick! Follow me! Jerry! Jerry, stop just a minute! Jerry, where did you come from? They told me. They told me they had you. I had to come find you. We shouldn't wait here. Come on, follow me! Jerry! He told us. That agent told us. It's really true? They really know something's gonna happen? It's true. I even had doubts. After Y2K was a bust, I started to think I was a sucker. That's when I got a phone call from a government group that said they wanted me to join a think tank. Said they wanted experts on the subject of survival without civilization. I figured, why not? All that stuff I learned was finally good for something. It was fun at first. You just talked about stuff. I guess I knew enough to really impress them. The more I talked, the more they listened. Next thing you know, they let me in on their big secret. Jerry, how long have you known this? Two years. I wanted to tell you both, but they don't want anyone to know. Yeah, the oath. What's up with that? It's a scam. A lot of people believe it, though. It showed up about a year ago as the group got larger. Now everyone thinks it's about the oath and the great secret. You want to know what the great secret really is? To tell you the truth, I'd rather not. You have to know. Besides, we're probably all dead already. You got our attention, Jerry. What's the secret? This whole thing started with a team of scientists. 
They calculated that there was a 100% chance that the Earth would be hit by a solar storm on December 21, 2012. The assumption is that a great extinction will occur, unmatched since 250 million years ago. Why didn't they tell anybody? You can't let billions of people just die. You can't. I can't. But there are people who not only can, but want it to happen. The scientists? No. The politicians. At least some of them. The ruling elite. Big business, big banks, big money. The blue bloods of the world who very quickly provided the financing and resources to build the compound. So big banks and big business built your deal out there in Michigan? Far from it. A lot of us protested the new plan. Many of us were killed or simply disappeared. That's when we agreed to an oath. An oath that was simple at first, but got a bit complicated over time. After we signed the oath, they allowed us to build our own protection. Of course, we had to use our own money and labor to do it. But it was that, or just die when the radiation wave hits. So this is really going to happen? It's real, Brett. It's not some wild Nostradamus prediction that appears to be true after the fact. This is, in fact, a fact. Why would anyone allow so many people to just die? A great cleansing. That's what the Blue Bloods call it. Get rid of the riffraff and let the rich and powerful literally inherit the Earth. Except for guys like me. They had a plan for a lot of us that we found out about. That's what caused the revolt. We were going to be allowed to survive as the working class, a new breed of peasant and slaves to populate the planet in limited numbers to serve the powerful. You had it right when you said it, Brett. The Illuminati. They hardly ever existed, but they're back with a vengeance now. And now is when they're making their move. They're trying to take possession of every underground bunker. Even the ones that small groups like ours built. They've run out of room at the larger bunkers. You know, the Greenbrier Resort, all those places reserved for the government and the rich and powerful. They want it all. And now they're taking it. And all of this happens this week? Tomorrow, to be exact. December 21st at 2.27 p.m. Merry Christmas. So... Where exactly are we going? Back to Michigan. There's a small area where we built a separate compound. It's where we started before we signed the oath. After that, we were allowed to sell everything we had and build the larger compound a little farther north. I doubt that any one of those people you met the other day are still alive, Brett. For all I know, they've found our smaller bunker as well. And what happens if they have? We sit around a fire in the snow and wait for the solar burst. Our only hope at that point is that it's quick. Then what's quick? Death. A lot of shooting. Your friends? It's hard to say. Do other people know? Have they found out? Is this like some kind of global panic? Fuck! 45 still going! Right down! Oh, raises the levels of chemical. No. There's nothing on the radio about it. I don't like this. What should we do? Lay low. Wait for the gunfire to stop and see if we can get a Don't look. move! Tom. Tom, it's me! Jerry! Jerry? He's bleeding. Tom, what happened? Who's doing this? The blue bloods. The powers that be. They're taking the compound. They're shooting everybody and moving in. Don't go there. <coughs> they just shoot. We have to do something. He's losing a lot of blood. Here, Jerry. <coughs> Take the B.A.R. There are clips in my pocket. They're afraid of it. 
Try to get to the old compound we started on years ago. That's the plan. They haven't found it yet, have they? Don't know. It's all up for grabs now. But I don't think they know it's there. It's too small for their needs. Tom, we're taking you with us. Don't be a fool. I'm already dead. Take me to the hospital and we all die. Take me to the old compound and I'll die in the night. Go. Just go. Take the rifle and the ammo. Leave me a grenade. I'll pull the pin and put it under my body. If anybody comes this way, I'll take them out. The grenade is live. Now go! We can't leave him here. You have to. They'll find you. There are too many of them to... <laughs> he was a good man. PhD in astrophysics. He was one of the first to identify the event. Come on. We can't just leave him here. Shouldn't we bury him? It doesn't matter anymore. Within the hour, everything on the surface of the planet will be turned to dust. Besides, he's laying on a live grenade. Now! That was Tom. Let's go. The old compound is close. Jerry, what time is it? Two o'clock. We have about 30 minutes. The old compound is just up ahead. Oh, no. This isn't it, is it? Unfortunately, yes, it is. How do we get in? We don't. They've collapsed the structure, filled it up. Is there another way in? No. It was never that big. Just a big, deep concrete box in the ground. What, what about the bigger shelter, the one where I first met up with you? It's all a question of how you want to die, Brett. Up here on the surface or in a hail of bullets back where Tom got shot up. There has to be something we can do. Jerry, is this it? Couldn't we find something else? A basement in a building? A concrete parking garage? It wouldn't help. Besides, the closest town is a half day away. We have to try. We have to do something. I don't care if I get shot. We can't just sit here. We couldn't die in a gunfight if we wanted to. They're probably already locked up inside. This is it. There's nowhere left to go. There's nothing we can do. I'm going back to where this compound is. If there are other people there, I think we should be with them. Besides, maybe it's not locked up. Maybe we can get in. Jerry, Claire's right. We have to do something. Let's go back to where you first took me. Maybe those steps going down are still there. The door might be closed, but we can at least sit under the concrete over the entrance. Yeah. Yeah, sure. It won't help, but sure. Maybe they don't know how to close it up. Maybe we can still get in. Maybe they'll kill us. None of it matters. Let's... Let's just go there. I still can't believe this is happening. Some of us... Some of us wanted to tell people. But the panic... The panic would have been too much. Around the world, there's only room for about 500,000 people in the bunkers that have been constructed. There was no way to protect everyone. That leaves about six billion people who aren't gonna make it. It wasn't my choice. We just couldn't tell anybody. There were all sorts of people we hired to help us build the compounds. If they had had any idea what they were for, it would have been chaos. But no one has a chance now. How could you keep such a secret? Hey, it's no secret. It's all over the news. Except no one really knows what's really going to happen. That was part of the plan. Keep everyone guessing. Even if I came out and said the world was going to end, I would have been just another nut. Think about it, Brett. If I had told you all this, would you have believed me? You got a point there. It was actually a good plan for a while. 
select half a million people who represented diverse knowledge and gene pools, customize a population to survive a cataclysm with the proper tools, equipment, and knowledge base to repopulate the Earth. That was the whole thing we were working on at the think tank towards the end there, before the construction of the bunkers began. It looked like it could work, until the big money and the big power showed up. Slowly, it wasn't about who you needed to rebuild civilization, but who you were. That's when they started to break many of us off and told us to build our own protection with our own money. And now they've taken that too. Yep. It sure seems that way. Shh! We're almost there. I don't hear anything. They must all be underground. So we won't get in? I don't think so. You can't open the main door from the outside. All of the controls are inside the main entrance. Shh. There's someone there. Is it a guard? No. Bob! Bob, it's Jerry. Don't shoot. Jerry. Jerry. Is, is Tom with you? Tom's dead. We found him in the woods. Have they secured the door? Yeah. Yeah, we're locked out. They let you keep your instruments? They don't know how to use them. They don't know what they're for. They just scrambled down into the bunkers and closed the door. I came out of the woods and... Turned it all on a couple minutes ago. How much time do we have? <sighs> Looks like about three minutes. Oh. This is my brother, Brett, and his girlfriend, Claire. I think you met Brett a few days ago. Yeah. Hi. Sorry about that. I guess now you know what all the fuss is about. Is it, um... Is it going to be safe if we go down those stairs and maybe just, you know, sit next to the concrete? If it makes you feel better, it won't help, though. I hate to say it, but you're better off just letting the radiation wave hit you straight on. It, it'll be... it'll be quicker that way. How much time, Bob? About 30 seconds. I'm gonna lay down on the ground. I, I think it'll be faster that way. It's okay, baby. I got you. Jerry, thank you. You're a good brother. You too, Brett. Sorry it didn't work out. Fast. Bob? What just happened? Was that it? Yeah. Yeah, that should have been it. Uh, does anyone have any burns? Did you, did you close your eyes? Did you see anything? You didn't tell us to close our eyes, Bob, and no, I, I didn't see a thing. In fact, look, the snow didn't even melt. Are we gonna die in a little while? I, I mean, that sound, that was the radiation, right? I don't get it. Uh, let me check something. Is there another burst coming? No, that was it. This is amazing. The frequency is like nothing we had anticipated. The radiation waves were enormous. They measured at least six feet from crest to crest. Is that bad? No. It's amazingly good. It means we endured no more radiation than you would be exposed to standing next to a microwave oven for a few seconds. So it's not the end of the world as we know it. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Brett! Claire! Get back! They're coming out of the bunker. We shoot and run, Jerry. There's too many of them. Oh, my God. What is that? It's a man. Or was a man. What happened to him? Don't shoot! He's dead. What's that smell coming out of there? Charred flesh. The radiation. The waveform was long. They were microwaves. They passed right through us. But for everyone underground in the bunker, it was like a massive microwave oven. You mean everyone inside looks like that? There was no way of knowing. We just knew there was going to be a radiation wave. We never guessed. It would have been a microwave. So they're all dead all over the world? The kings, the queens, the ruling elite, the presidents and politicians? Gone. Who's gonna run the governments and the countries, the banks, the financial systems? That's up to us, I guess. Government of the people, and by the people. You think that'll work? It's worth a try. Who knows? Maybe we'll get it right this time. If one prediction has always come true, it's that every generation believes it must live in a time of apocalypse. Yet in our curious desire to pursue our own demise, we have to confront the simple fact that what we fear the most is rarely defined by the truth. Unless, of course, you read between the lines of the prophecies, sign the oath and descend into that bunker of unintended consequences known as the Twilight Zone. Two thousand twelve, starring Christian Stolte with Stacy Keach as your narrator, was written for the Twilight Zone by Steve Newby. Heard in the cast were Danny Goldring, Sarah Wellington, David Darlow, Joby Cerny, Derek Nelson, Peter DeFaria, and Carl Amari. The producers of The Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises and the Rod Serling Estate for making this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced by Carl Amari and directed by Joe B. Cerny for Falcon Picture Group. Sound design, custom Foley effects, recording, and editing are produced in the Cerny American Sound to Picture Theater by sound designers Craig Lee, Bob Benson, Todd Beyer, and Tim Cerny. Music for The Twilight Zone is provided by CBS and American Music Company, Incorporated, New York. To learn more about The Twilight Zone radio dramas and to download episodes, including six free episodes on our homepage, visit our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. Doug James speaking. Mm -hmm.